Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, A natural man cannot. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither they are not able to sp spiritually discern this. It says the natural man. He's not able to comprehend the things of the Spirit of God. Today we find out that in the church of Jesus Christ, there are a lot of religious people. Religious people are people that get up every Sunday morning and they come into God's house because this is what they think. You know, I must go into God's house, I must listen to his word, and I've got to go back home and take the blessings with me. We are a people that only come to the house of God and call Abba for what we can get out of him. But God is looking for a people as much as he is a God that will be able to supply our every need. We have a God who is able to take care of us. He said he will be able to give us exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we ask even think or ask for. That's the God that we serve. But the thing is, as much as he, he wants to do that for us, God is longing for a relationship with the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia is a shot that is alive and that is ready to allow his Holy Spirit to come into their lives and make them spiritual beings. Do you know that when God created you, he created you as a spiritual being? Although we are made out of clay, although we are earthen vessels, but he says that he has pull, poured in this treasure into earthen vessels. This treasure that he poured in, when you have become a Christian, when you accepted Jesus, when you have come to acknowledge who you, he is, you have went through the waters of baptism because you heard the word of God. The word of God says, repent and be baptized and so that you will be converted, so that you, you will have a new beginning in your life and you will be reconciled with God. And it's a wonderful place to be in. The day you went through the baptism, you know, through the, through the waters of baptism, when you declared, you made an outward declaration that you now outwardly declare that you are a child of God. Just like you, when you are married, you know, you had the witnesses. People now said, oh, that is a married person. When you have accepted Christ into your life, and when you went through the waters of baptism, that is why John the Baptist came. He came, he said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. The word repent means you are now able to recognize that as you have focused on who God is, you have come to this place of understanding that you are a sinner. Your life is not what God wants it to be. So you have to come into a place of repentance. Repent and be baptized. And of course the Bible tells us, if you look in John, it says many of the Pharisees came there. Let's just look at John. And I, I was like kind of very shocked. If we spoke like that to the people that are religious people, they might kill us. They might. But the Bible tells us, that John said, he said, yeah, let's look at it. First John, and he says, 24. And they that were sent were of the Pharisees, and they asked him and said unto him, Why baptize thou then, if thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, and say, uh, saying, I baptize you with water, but... There standeth one among you whom ye know not. Jesus was already there. He, it is who is coming after me, is preferred before me, whose shoes I cannot even latch up. I am not worthy to unloosen. 
And then I think in one of the places I saw, he was telling them, who have called you in, you generation of snakes? Who, who have called you? Who have, why have you come? Now, that's very hard words that he used. Who has called you to come? Snakes represent subtlety. They move very smoothly. You can't even see them. It's so fast sometimes. You know, sometimes we had some experiences with snakes, and in no time they come into the house, and you're looking for it. It's gone behind the piano. You, you are terrified. Oh, my word, the snake is going to come to bite me. And really speaking, the snake, the serpent was in the garden right in the beginning of time. And he came there, and he spoke very subtly to Eve, confused about who God was. But the Bible is calling us, church, into a place where we, we come in and we understand that after you've accepted Christ, what are some of the foundational truths that you must build on? Some of us have, haven't even built on the foundation of Christianity, our faith in what God is calling us to do. Some of us are still struggling. We are still in a double-minded place. Not too long ago, we've had a, a signing when the UN got together with the Pope, the, the people from, from Egypt, I mean, the Arab countries were there, and they were trying to embrace this one world religion, and it is coming. We are coming into this place where we are moving into the, to the one world government, the one world religion, the one world accommodating for humanity. But you know, when God created you, he created you to have fellowship with him. And if you are losing out on your fellowship with him, you will find yourself in a bad place even though you might profess Christianity. So the Bible tells us that we need to understand that the natural man, when, when sin came into the world, the spirit of God was removed from man. That is why God could not come and talk to them anymore. Before that, when he breathed into them, he breathed into them the breath that came from the Holy Spirit. God himself breathed into you. So many of us today, as we are continuing in our Christian life, we are forgetting that on a daily basis, you have to allow the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. It's part of the Godhead. Jesus has come. He is the Word. That Word became flesh and He dwelt amongst us. And when He came, He showed us the heart of the Father. As much as we look at the religious things that were given down, the laws of God that came in, because humanity became so vile, depraved in their mindset. That in the beginning, really, it was really the faith. Abraham, when he was called out, he was called out with faith from the place where there was idolatry and all of the things that, that God detested. And as he called him out, he called him out, and Abraham listened to the voice of God. And he started to come out of this place, trusting and having faith in our great God. And the Bible tells us today, that as children of God, we need to come into this place of allowing the Spirit of God to work through us in a daily basis. If you are not allowing for that, then you are functioning on two cylinders. God actually created you to be a three-part being. He's created you with body, he's created you with a soul, and he's created you with spirit. If we don't reflect on the God who created us and come to the place of focusing on him in our trials and in our testings, then you will be running on two cylinders. And if you are running on two cylinders, you will be backfiring where you will 
having problems in your marriage. You will not understand how God wants you to relate as a husband. You will not understand how God wants you to relate as a wife. There will be told continuous conflict. There will be continuous complaining. There will be continuous grumbling. But we truly thank the Lord. I mean, I came from a family of 11. So I understood what it is to grow up in a huge family. And in this huge family, there's sharing, there's loving, there's considering each other, there's praying for each other. And that is what the children of God supposed to have become. That's what God's expecting of us. When the Holy Spirit comes in, you are no more a self-centered or a selfish person. You have a heart that wants to serve. So today we look at it, and God is looking for these people that have his spirit. Exodus chapter 30, 35 verse 21. It says here, and they came everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle, of the congregation, and for all his service, and for their holy garments. When the tabernacle was being built, Moses was there. And he was telling the people that there were things that they needed for the tabernacle. They needed a lot of things. They needed the shoe bread on a daily basis. They needed the oil for the lamp and you know, all of the things that pertains for the, for the tabernacle to function. And the Bible tells us that they came with willing hearts. Oh, that God would help us to be willing. Sometimes we do more grumbling, more complaining. Whenever there's something needed in the kingdom, we walk away because we have no passion to further the kingdom of God. God's calling us with his spirit to serve to worship God, to honor him, to love him. None of us understand the generation that have gone before us and laid some of the things that you are experiencing today and that you can really uh, come into this, even to this building with all of the comfort, but it was not some of you that planted in. It was a previous generation that worked and how we honor them for it. How we thank them for it. God is going to honor each generation for the position that they were placed in during the time that God called them. Amen? So today, we want you to know that God wants to stir our hearts into understanding why you are called into the kingdom. You are not here into the kingdom just to come and enjoy it. Of course, we enjoy the fellowship. We enjoy the presence of God. But church, it is more than that. It is more than that. Serving God is more than that. It is not just coming here, you know, on a Sunday morning. It is your heart. It is how you're doing things for God. It is your willingness in how you're walking this Christian road. God comes in to transform your life. God takes us step by step by step. And we thank God for the maturity that is now reflected on our sons and our daughters. Thank the Lord for that. They've come into a mature place. They no more being weaned, you know, the weaning is, you know, mom must do everything for them. Dad must do everything for them. But they have stepped up now and they've stepped into the responsibilities that are called into the kingdom of God. We are moving into this kingdom that God is building. He's talking about this glorious church, this church that is not full of pride or arrogance or self-exalted, 
But this church that is humble before him, that when they are humble before him and they're seeking his face, he reaches out and he lifts them up. And as he lifts them up, his glory starts to come into their lives. And it is not their own abilities that counts. It is the ability that the Holy Spirit empowers them with so that they go out seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. And they see God doing, demonstrating his power because they were willing to become oracles and vessels of God. That is what God is calling you for. It's a last day church. This church has to be prepared. It has to be a church that is ready. The Bible tells us that these people were willing. In Numbers 11, 29, the Lord, the Bible tells us that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. God, even in the Old Testament, he allowed his spirit to come upon those who understood him and were hungry for him and were thirsty for him and were ready to fulfill what he called them to do. Whenever God calls somebody to do, let's do something, in his kingdom, he will allow his spirit to come upon them. Some of us are running with just two cylinders. I'm a Christian. I haven't spent time with Jesus. I haven't had the oil of God's spirit being poured into me. But I'm running with no oil. And I collapse because in this world, in the outside world, if you are not geared up for what you're going to face in the outside world, you're going to be a wounded soldier. Nobody runs into war without being enlisted into battle and come under training and come under divine instruction. There's a general. In the army, there's a general. And the general will tell you, right turn, left turn, march forward, up and down. They will tell you where, where you must position yourself. Are you listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit in this last hour? Or are you sitting in a place where you think, well, I am so blessed. I am so comfortable that I don't have to worry about the discomforts of what is happening outside. God's tearing the nest, children of God. Is pushing you out of the nest. The Holy Spirit is pushing God's people out of the nest. And he says, now I want you to fly. I want you to soar. I want you to start doing things that I have, I have taught you. I have geared you up for, for this last hour. Are you geared up? Or are you still consumed with lust? Are you still consumed with covetousness? Are you still consumed with the things of the world? Fine, we are living in the world. But we are not of this world. We are truly building or sending our material of how we function in the kingdom of God for our mansions up there. Oh my word, our mansions up there. How many children, how many people have you today, Gerald, witnessed to and brought them to church? That's how the kingdom of God is supposed to operate. I remember when my parents became Christians, very especially my mother. She was the first Christian in, Mar in Marineal. Had to leave her inheritance, come out of her father's house, thrashed out with ten children, no more, you are now able to benefit out of the abundance of the father's house that she belonged to. Went and tried to lease a piece of ground, built a house that never owned a house all her life after that, never owned a piece of ground. But the multiple people that came through the doors of that house that my mother built, there were many, many men and women of God that came out of the ministry of Eden Temple. How we thank God for these people that laid down their lives. They didn't have many material positions, but they were building a kingdom for God. They were building souls for the kingdom of God. Today we find so few evangelists. Don't for one minute think that in your blessings you have made it by yourself. It was God who opened the door for your blessings. It is God who has brought you to a better place in your life. 
It is not the consuming of our materialism that really counts. The materialism and the functioning of God once in your physical realm is for this time. But there is something more that he wants you to plant into and invest into the lives of those you have around you and those you see a deep need in. Are you like the Levi and the priest who see wounded people that are on the road crying out for help and you turn and go the other way on, with your awesome vehicles that you got now? You are missing all of the people that you used to or God wants you to touch. We're not against vehicles. We all got vehicles. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. We're not coming to church now, walking, and, you know, early. We don't do that anymore. God's blessed us. But are you a blessing? Or are you taking your things that God's blessed you with? I'm not saying don't go sit at the beach, have the picnic. But there's a time that you give to God. There's a time that you give to his kingdom. There's a time that you give to your family. If you are investing spiritually, you will lack nothing in your family, in time how you give them, how you speak to them. You might have given them very, a lot of material position. And some of, his, some of you are so tired working that when you come home, you are so angry with your family because you're so tired. God didn't call you to toil like that. No. He called you into a place of rest and wisdom. Money is important. But if you're putting your mammon before God, church, it's going to be a sorry story. Amen? Blessings are there to bless, to be an overflow for what God has called you to do. Amen? Praise the Lord. Why are you toiling so hard? Everything that you're toiling for, and if you're not toiling it and investing into what God's called you to do, it's going to be left to be behind. We praise God for a nice home. Hallelujah. But God's building us a mansion. 70 years or maybe more, but eternity compared to that 70 years, is nothing compared to this life. So church, we need to move out of just functioning just for ourselves, our body, our emotion, my feeling, my body. God is a God who wants the church to become a spiritual reflection of his holiness, of his love, of his mercy. Can you say that there is a holiness in you? Or are you burning strange fires in the tabernacle of God? Huh? Do you know what happened to Aaron's sons? So t I want you to know God is coming to this place. Don't think that the place of grace is a place of such mercy. God is going to smile and overlook anything that I do. Don't be a foolish version. Come on. Become wise in the things of the Spirit. Ask God to come into your life. Become the spiritual person. The spiritual person is full of body. Fine, we must take care of our body. This body will be here until the day we die. Amen. And then our spirit soars into the heavenlies. You know, the body was so beautiful. We have earth styles and everything. The day we die, everything is gone. The spirit is left behind. The worms are eating it up or the fire is burning it up. One of the two things. But your spirit, it's a spirit. Not your body. Not your emotion. It's your spirit. That's why God says they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So let us become these people that are ready and open with our spirit man so that the Holy Spirit would work in us, reflect in us. Joy of the Lord will flood our hearts. I remember when we went to Australia a few years back, uh, on our, I think it was our 40th anniversary, 
And then we, we, when we went to Malawi, I saw the fields all dry. It was looking very bad. And we were trying to talk to them about empowering their lives, you know, doing things. And then when I came out, I saw the fields all dry. And I asked the man, you know, you all got so much of land here. Why can't you all do something? Plant. Get some chickens. Get the eggs going. Get some sheep. Get some cows. You know? Start investing in these things so that you'll replenish the, the, and reproduce in your time of struggles. But when we came at the man says, there's very seldom in this drought we have no water. So on the plane, I told pastor, I would love to see a well put into Malawi so that at least people will get some water and then, you know, now they wouldn't have any excuse. And then we went to... Uh, to uh, Australia. And he said, when we go there, we pay for all of them coming to the conferences. We pay for their food. So I am not able to do this now. That's what he told me. He's saying, I'm investing to the men, the people. I can't do that. And I said, well, God, why did you put it in my heart? And of course, when God puts something in your heart, you are able to speak about it and it will move somebody else that you are in contact with and bring in the blessing. That's how God works. And we were there, I think it was almost the last Sunday, we were visiting with Vani and Alan, and they were in a hall. This man was just carrying on, you know, wiping, mopping after they finished. It was a community hall every time they have a service after that, they mop and clean. And then they give you refreshments while you're standing on a side. And he came to me, I think he came to pastor, and he said, I'd like to know what are you doing in Malawi? And then pastor said to tell him. And well, on the Tuesday, I spoke at a woman in a, a house meeting with women there. And so they wanted me to share. And after I shared the word, they wanted to know a little bit of Africa. And I said, well, God's placed it in my heart about a well. But I can only trust that he will find the person who will be able to do what is placed in our hearts. And of course, by the end of the service, this man that is so willing to give into mission fields was mopping the floor without any hairs about him, nothing like that. He was a man that, that had substance. And he came over and pastor told him what it would cost for a while. He said, what it would cost for a while? And he told him, and he said, well, the Lord has allowed me, while I was driving here, my wife spoke about what your wife spoke on Tuesday, and I, and I felt the, the urge to do that well. Within a few seconds, he transferred whatever amount was for that well. Isn't God good? He uses your spirit. He uses the burden that you feel for others. He makes you see what others need and you become a vessel. I mean, I didn't give the, uh, really do the well, but I was a vessel that was able to declare the need that was there at that time. That's all I did. And God allowed us to connect to a person who had substance so that that need can be met. Can you see how God works? You might not have the substance, but it is your voice. It is your burden. It is your passion that as you declare it, other people come into whatever you want and they start to build God's kingdom. Jesus was a person who was able to be the friend of sinners. But he was not a sinner. The Bible talks about him as a sinless person. How come today the church of Jesus Christ are now, in fact, you know, those days, they had like, you know, uh, sometime, when a, especially when a Christian built a house, he will say, you know, I made one room, wait our prayer closet. And I'd say, oh, praise the Lord. Every day they went into that prayer closet and they would read the Bible. They would put the music. But some of you today, what are you doing? You are building and putting things that making you drunk with wine, but not of the spirit. You are advertising for these things and you are entertaining with these things. God says, be not drunk with wine. But be drunk with the 
Holy Spirit. The Bible talks more about the spirit of drunkenness because of what it opens people to. When they at a spirit place of drunkenness, they do things that, that are absolutely unholy, uncalled for, fights, morality, immorality, activities of darkness. This is what happens when you are only functioning with the natural and you forgot about your spiritual inheritance. The Bible tells us in Numbers 14, 24, it says that Caleb, 12 men were chosen as they went into the promised land. Joshua sent 12 men. They all came through the journey. They walked through God's power being demonstrated. But as he sent them to spy out the land, they saw all the good things there, of course. They were excited about the good things. But when they came back, they did not come back with faith in the God that brought them through the desert. They came back giving them a bad report. When you are not spiritually inclined, you will only see the problems. I got my one sister will send me the WhatsApp on every bad news. Every bad news. Everything that happens in parliament, she'll send it to me. Everything, everything, everything. And sometimes I feel sorry for her because she's right there, you know, in the flea market, you know, where everybody are. And she, I suppose she's so open to it that she's so consumed with this. And I just sit there and say, Lord, I cannot change it, but I look to you. I look to you to change the government of South Africa. I look to you to change this nation around. I look to you to deliver men and women out of the corruptness, out of the covetous spirit. When poverty is raging over our nation, I look to you. I look to you, Lord, and I ask you to change this nation around. God wants to hear the cry of our hearts. He's looking at the voices on the earth to send down heaven with these angelic beings, to bring in help and turn things around in the earth realm. But I, is he listening to any voices? We have the intercessory going now. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that when, when these 12 people went, it was only Caleb and Joshua that said, don't worry, our God is able to help us to overcome the giants in the land. Church, we need to become alive. There are some people that are reeling with the spirit of alcoholism. And we need to reach out to them. We need to reach out. Am I the only one praying for them? That prayer not enough? How about some of you who are alcoholics and are free from alcoholism to go and reach out to those alcoholics now? That's why God set you free. You know how he set you free? So you were able to go set them free. Don't think God took you out of drug addiction for nothing. You are here because you experienced the bondage. You are now because of your freedom in Christ, you are able to minister into their lives. God didn't take us out of Hinduism for nothing. Don't go and join them in their festivals. Separate yourself. I'm not saying don't join Hindus. You have to join them. But don't go and join them at their special feast. Then you are welcoming demons into your life. That's what you're doing. These spirits come and possess you. So church, we cannot live in a natural place anymore. God's calling us into a spiritual realm. Caleb and Joshua had the spirit. They had another spirit in them. Have you got this another spirit in you in this world? The spirit of the Holy Ghost? Or are you carrying the spirit of the world around? Let us come into the place of allowing the spirit of God to come in. The Bible tells us Caleb, he had another spirit with him. Followed God fully. He followed God fully. His seed, the Bible tells us, shall possess the land. 
Seed of righteousness. Seed of righteousness. It's not the, the, your name, your surname that you came from. Some of us are so excited about our surnames, and of course we're happy. I mean, I come from the Naidu family. You'll always hear the people say, the Naidus, they do things differently. That's a trip. They do things differently. They train differently. When you are natural, the church is so consumed in the clapping every day. They're coming here to church. They're going back. But they don't ever meet the needs of the Samaritans that are wounded. God wants you to meet the need of the Samaritans. He wants you to meet the needs of the wounded people out there. He wants you to tell them how much God loves them and how much God cares about them. We are waiting for our young people to move into this place. So today, church, God says he is a spirit of truth. God is a spirit. He is a spirit that quickens us. The Holy Spirit is here. Now, the other day, as I was watching something, and I didn't really see it like that, but this lady was saying that she had a revelation from God, and this is what God told her. He says the church has five foolish people and five wise people, the percentage. The five wise are people that spend time every day waiting on God so that the oil of his anointing would come in and refresh them. In the tabernacle, the light never went off because every day that oil, that lamp had to be filled in with oil. Right? That light, it was a perpetual flame before the Lord. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, Brent, you have to spend time with the Lord so that the oil of his anointing will fill you on a daily basis so as you go out, you become a perpetual light to the world. That's what it is all about. Now this lady told us, she said this is the vision that God gave us. She said those people who are spending time in his presence. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up as wings, as eagle. They will run. Strength from the Holy Spirit will come upon them and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. They will carry on even when they're 78. Praise the Lord. Even with two knee replacement, they're still functioning. Praise God. Isn't that God wonderful? Because it's a perpetual flame of passion for God within the heart of his servants. Praise the Lord, Darren. We don't get tired when we have waiting on God. The Holy Spirit pours in the oil. It says that the 50% are now thinking that they go out and they just do without spending time in his presence. They just do us. And what happens to them? They're not spending time anymore in his presence. If you're not spending time in the presence of God, church, you're going to be the one who will find out that you're depleted in ministry, you're depleted as a husband, you're depleted as a wife, because you're not spending time with your creator to fill you in with his presence. So as you go out as a mother, as you function as a father in your home, when you wait on the Lord, God will give you the strength and the ability, even from a tired day of work, you will come home to minister to those boys because those are the boys you're working for. You're not just working for yourself. You're working for your family. So don't forget that. Don't say, I'm working, I'm working. Don't give me any trouble. You're working because you, you are empowering and filling your family with the goodness of God, with the resources of godly character, spending time over your family, praying over them on a daily basis, so that the oil of his spirit would flow out of your life. Today, church, as we bow our heads and I close our eyes, I didn't finish all that I have to finish, but I believe today the Holy Spirit is calling you and making you yearn just for a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. 
It was awesome this morning to speak on the natural man and the spiritual. And I believe that the Holy Spirit is urging us to come into a spiritual walk where our spirits are continually looking to Him and where we're spending time with Him so that our inner man will be strengthened so that when we go out into the world, the Holy Spirit would give us the strength to know how to cope with some of the difficulties that we face. This is only the Holy Spirit Church. It's not our own strength. It's not our own abilities. But when His Spirit is with us, He will go before us. And every giant will come down when we put our faith in Him. Be blessed today.